So Luke, a viewer's question, and actually a very local viewer's question. Mm -hmm. This comes from Absom of Sydney. Mm -hmm. And Absom wants to know, how would we know if our universe is spinning or rotating? Ah, very, very good question, which takes us to a lot of interesting areas. So uh, in the standard model, in just the Big Bang theory, the usual one, uh, the universe is only expanding and it's expanding in the same way in every direction. There's no special direction. Uh, and so in particular, there can't be any sort of axis of rotation. So there's no uh, rotation in the standard model, but that hasn't stopped people from sort of asking the question within the same framework of, of space time and gravity that Einstein gave us general theory of relativity is there way um, is there a way of making a universe that rotates and um, the first person who actually proved that there was a way of doing this was a very interesting person by the name of Kurt Gödel mm. um, so he's um, very famous for a, a number of things he did in logic he was a mathematician but he, he proved some theorems in the 1930s which are um, amazing and uh, sort of too much for us to go into here but he was uh, one of the most famous mathematicians of the day he, he was Austrian but he moved to America where he lived with and worked with Einstein at Princeton um, and I can't resist a Kurt Gödel story so here's, here's one of my favourites he was famously quite eccentric sort of paranoid uh, that, that, uh, that sort of picture of the weirdo genius that uh, we're all trying to <laughs> Not to succumb to, but he, he was applying for citizenship in America. And as part of that, you could bring a character reference along, bring someone along. And so he was able to bring along Albert Einstein to, <laughs> to his interview and say, Albert Einstein thinks I'm all right. Um, the night before the interview, Einstein gets a phone call and it's Gödel. And he's saying he's a logician, right? He's, look, he's been looking, studying. So he's been looking through the American Constitu Constitution and he's found a loophole. He thinks he's found a way that someone could uh, use the system to install themselves as a dictator. And Einstein says, all right, just go to sleep. Please don't mention this tomorrow during your interview. Uh, and so they get to the interview the next day. Einstein and Gödel, they walk in, they sit down and the, the interviewer says, starts with Gödel and says, oh, oh, you're German, are you? And he's Austrian, and so that immediately puts him offside. And the guy keeps talking about Germany. He says, oh, you know, it's terrible what happened over there. This sort of dictator's taken over the whole place. Um, it couldn't happen here, of course. And that immediately pushes Gödel's button. He's, he's off. He's trying to explain to this guy how it could happen here. You've got a hole in the Constitution. You've got to do something about this. And Einstein's there just trying to calm him down. Calm down, Gert, Kurt. Anyway, thankfully, Einstein's... Uh, steady hand wins the day and he does actually get uh, American citizenship. Okay, but back to rotating back to universes. Rotating what's, universes. what's Kurt Gödel got to do with rotating universes? So Einstein has his 70th birthday party and as there's a, a conference there as part of the celebration because, you know, that's what academics do. And uh, Gödel brings him a very interesting birthday present. He brings him a solution of his own equations of Einstein's equations, which describe a rotating universe. So this is the first time that anyone had done this. Um, and it, it, it's it got ordinary matter in it. It's got the cosmological constant in it, which is kind of interesting that you have to throw that into the mix. And what, what Gödel proved was that, and other than that, it's expanding. Um, what Gödel proved was there was something very interesting that could happen in that universe. It it could contain what are known in the in the business as closed time-like curves. And we all know what that's code for, right? We all know what that's code for. That means time travel. Uh, so we're all very excited when that comes up. So what it means is, so a, a closed curve is one that comes back to itself, and so a closed time-like curve is one that comes back to, not to, just to the same place, but to the same time as well. Now, you could, you could draw one of these in special relativity and it would come back to itself. The problem is no object could ever travel along that path. You've just created a fiction. But why, why couldn't they? Well, uh, for at least part of the journey, um, you would have to be going faster than the speed of light. Yeah. So that's out. That's gone. Um, if there's a journey that you can travel on in, within relativity, you know, a clock or any person or a rocket, that's, that's called a time-like curve. Uh, the, the reason for that is basically a clock could travel that way. So you, the, the theory better tell you what the time on the clock is at each point. 
So if you've got a closed time light curve, both of those things, it means that an ordinary person with a rocket could travel along that curve and it comes back to the same point in time and space. And so Gödel had proved that in his rotating universe, with the right path through space-time, you could come back to a certain point in the past that you yourself departed from. So, for example, you could play poker against yourself at different ages. And that was also the first time anyone had seen that. And it's, it's kind of weird that rotation was all it took in order to make time travel happen. Yeah, and I think it's an important point to remember here is that um, time travel has not been shown to be impossible. Mm. It leads to a lot of issues and paradoxes, etc. grandfather paradox being an important one. But if you bend and warp and twist space the right way, you get these closed timeline curves and rotation seems to do it for you. Yeah, so the interesting thing is uh, you could also get you also get time, closed time light curves in a rotating black hole. So uh, there is a famous solution from Roy Kerr, uh, who is a New Zealander, actually. Uh, th so there was the description of how a black hole is. It's called Schwarzschild space-time. But uh, he found a way of describing a rotating black hole. And it turns out that the singularity at the center isn't a point, it's a ring. Um, now, if you hit the edge of the ring, you're finished, as you know, as usual. Um, but if you manage somehow to go through the middle and back out again, depending on how your space-time is stitched together, you, that uh, will be a closed time-like curve. You will come back to uh, where um, you will come back to yourself at a previous point. You'll yeah. play poker against yourself at a younger age. And it's interesting that it's rotation in these yeah, two yeah. cases. Yeah. I've always thought I've never understood rotation, and this is just <laughs> confirming my suspicions. Anyway. So was, was, is Gold lit? Is he the only one to propose a rotating universe? Well, once you've, once you've discovered this, people went looking for more. And what, uh, what physicists like to do, particularly theoretical physicists with a mathematical um, uh, background, is they want to discover sort of a general type of universe, all the ways in which it could rotate. Uh, and it turns out that was done, they're called the Bianchi models. And the way they all work is if if you, sh uh, there's a number in there that describes, well, actually there's different kinds of rotating universes. But essentially, if you stop the rotation, they all just turn back into ordinary um, expanding universes, Big Bang universes. So we've got a sort of generalization of let's take a Big Bang universe and just spin it somehow. Um, so they come under a number of different types. There's actually nine different types um, uh, for various sort of technical reasons. But now that you've got these models, you can, you can ask, all right, what would the universe look like if our universe was one of these models, even if it was just rotating a little bit, rather than just the standard vanilla-flavoured uh, Big Bang model? So, so when you say look like, what mm. you mean is if you were an observer in that universe collecting light... What would you see and how would it compare to what we see in our universe? Yeah. So uh, as with you know, most of the things in the universe uh, in cosmology, you want to look at something far away um, because there's more time for expansion and all those things to do interesting things. So the, the furthest light we can see is from the cosmic microwave background. And so what, what astronomers have done and cosmologists have done is ask, what would the cosmic microwave background look like in a rotating universe? Actually, one of the people to do this was a guy called Andrew Ponson, who I who did the. Uh, I was at Cambridge at the same time as him. We were both doing our PhDs. He actually sat opposite me in our uh, crowded little PhD office. So I was doing boring things like bouncing light off just atoms, you know, in my simulations. Boring. Uh, so he he was sending his light through rotating universes. The um, interesting thing about it is uh, if you have any sort of and it, this will always happen statistically, any sort of large-scale structure in the cosmic microwave background, it's, it's overall random, but there is this, this sort of patterns there. Uh, what the rotation will do is make those patterns swirl. So you start off with the standard random thing that we just see today. It's only red-shifted. That's the only difference. It's just at lower temperature. But if there's this rotation, when we look at, particularly if you look directly at along the line of, that the universe is rotating around the axis of rotation. If you look at the cosmic microwave background, it will appear to be sort of swirling around. Um, and so once you've got those models, you can then say, all right, we've got our observations of the cosmic microwave background. Let's go and see if we see any evidence for a sort of swirl there. 
Okay, okay. Um, I will put a link to some stuff that Andrew's written on this, and he yeah. he's still in astronomy at UCL. He is, and you, yes. if you listen to podcasts, you might hear him as a sort of resident astronomer on the Curious Cases of Fry and Rutherford every so often. Oh, wonderful! Yeah, yeah. he does a bunch of interesting stuff. We'll 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 post we'll link you to his Twitter page, his website, and stuff. So the question is, we now have lots and lots of observations of the cosmic microwave background. Do we see any of this cosmic swirly pattern? Sadly, no. Um, it would be great if there was. That would be really interesting. Uh, but um, so far as we can tell, you know, there's no statistical evidence. I mean, it's a hard thing to turn up statistically. It could always be there sort of hidden in the noise. Yeah. But unfortunately, no. Um, it's not in that particular observation. So we're pretty sure that the universe isn't spinning like a, you know, like a spinning top at high speed kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I do believe that there was a previous attempt to measure uh, the rotation of the universe. There's been a few attempts over the years, and this is not using the cosmic mi microwave background, but using radio galaxies. Mm -hmm. So these are galaxies of stars that have a black hole, hole in the middle, and that black hole produces a, a radio jet, a jet of a plasma that comes out in a long line. So you get this big straight line on the sky. Yep. And if you could see the sky with, with radio sensitive eyes, you'd see these streaks all over the place. And some people... Um, suggested that if we're in a rotating universe, that that rotation will actually cause a very slight alignment in the orientation of these radio jets when right. we observe them from the Earth. Okay. So they're, they're randomly scattered, so on the sky they point in random directions. But if you've got rotation, the ones along the axis of rotation will line up very, very slightly as okay. you go around the sky. Um, and there was a it was a, uh, an announcement of, that they discovered this rotation, but then the discussion descended into statistics because it wasn't a very strong signal yeah. and, you know, it, you know, what signal, what's noise, blah, blah, blah. And I think at the end of the day, they concluded that these radio galaxy observations also showed that uh, our universe isn't rotating. So uh, even though mathematically we can write down the equations of a rotating universe, it doesn't appear to be the kind of universe in which we live. Yeah, the exciting thing though is the more, so with that particular case, the more we understand the astrophysics, the more there's a chance of using that astrophysics to see a signal that we couldn't see before. Yeah. And so as, you know, astronomy, astrophysics, as we understand the universe better, we might find that, that, that little pointer in the universe which can tell us whether it's rotating or not. I'm sure we'll keep looking.